kids football skills, we give them breakfast, give them lunch, and then they have an autograph signing session. It's completely free. So what kind of camp do you know of that you can go meet NFL players, you get breakfast, lunch, t-shirt, they talk to them about nutrition, you know, how to keep their body healthy, learn football skills, and, and it's all free. So everything that we do, we want to make sure that we keep it completely free to the kids. With all the things that you're doing, mm -hmm. what do your parents think about your accomplishments? Oh, they are overly excited. My mom, she lives an hour and 45 minutes away from here, so she comes a lot to help us out with our own kids. And she says, Kelly, you're always ripping and running and doing stuff. She said, I'm so proud of you. She used to tell me, you never wanted kids. She said, but kids are always in your life now. I have four of my own. I have uh, 19 nieces and nephews, and they're always calling me, and I'm helping them out, even helping them over the phone with their homework. And if I don't know it, I'll go Google it real quick and, you know, figure out how to help them. But she says, I'm, you know, just blessed that you're able to do all this and my dad same way super excited he lives in Florida he's like looking at my Facebook updates all the time and he's like I'm so proud of you that you guys are giving back mm. what do you feel like this does to your children oh it's when definitely it's teaching them that nothing is free because we you know at our house people might think oh you know your husband plays football you know you probably got a maid and a nanny and this is that and your kids you know don't know what it's like to struggle and this is that we make them wash baseboards. We make them do push-ups and they get in trouble. Go clean the dog cage out. Like we make them do hardcore work because otherwise they wouldn't know how to do it. So when they go with us to these different events, like I took my daughter to the shelter to pack up uh, canned goods to give away to families. She said, mom, she said, families really, you know, don't have any food. They don't, they're not gonna eat on Thanksgiving. I said, yeah, at this point she was seven. I said, they're not gonna have any food unless we do these bags for them to give them food. She started crying. I said, why are you crying? She said, I thought everybody had food. So that let me know right there, I needed to start teaching them more, you know, to let them know everybody's not as fortunate as you are. So I think that it's gonna push them without us telling them to go do work in their own communities when they get older and to give back. Even the four-year-old, my mom was telling him, um, Junior, she said, there's some people that don't have shoes. That's why your mom and dad are, you know, donating. We had some big boxes of shoes we were giving away to some friends that were doing a shoe drive. And he said, well, why didn't Jesus just help them get shoes? So we had to explain to him, you know, that it wasn't, it wasn't that easy, but it just brought a tear to my eye again that he compared, you know, Jesus, he was thinking about God and, you know, and knowing that God can help anybody in any situation. And he wanted all those kids to be able to have shoes. So I think the stuff that we do is centers, you know, around our family, it teaches them things and we can bring it out and take it to other people. But I think they're gonna be great parents when they get to the age a long time from now. <laughs> God has really blessed your family. Yes. How awesome is the God that you serve? Super awesome. I, you know, every day I tell Thomas, I'm like, hey, you know, if we go to bed at night and we don't pray, something is wrong. Like, we need to make sure we pray together every night. We pray with the kids, we pray together. You know, if one of us falls asleep, we gotta wake the other one up because we are blessed beyond measure. Like, it's an infinite amount of blessings that have been placed over me and him and our families. Mm -hmm. And we can't say thank you enough to God for everything that he's done and he's allowing us to do in the community for others. What are some of the future events that Defending Dream have going on? Well, we're planning right now a cheerleading camp because we normally do the football camp mm -hmm. for the boys, so we want to do something for the girls. Um, we have talked about doing like a different five mile run or something like that to raise money for the foundation. And I know a lot of, you know, athletes or different celebrities that do different fundraisers and different foundations, they normally partner with like American Heart Association or, you know, the Breast Cancer Awareness Association or Susan G. Coleman or something like that. So we want to make sure that all the funds we raise stay in the community and stay in the area mm -hmm. and we can donate it to AAU teams or, you know, different organizations and schools around in the Charlotte area. So we're planning on doing some of those events in the summer and then we'll do a back to school giveaway to kick off our next season where we give away 300 book bags full of school supplies to CMS students. So those are some of the things that are coming up right now. Why is that school supply so important to those kids? There are, again, a lot of parents, a lot of you know people right now who are out of jobs because the economy is bad. So they can't afford, they get these long lists you know, for a second grader or a fifth grader, and they can't afford if they had three or four kids to go get these school supplies. So we reach out to a neighborhood, we have sign-up sheets for that neighborhood, and we let them 
fill out their child's name and their age and just come pick up a bag full of school supplies with no questions asked because it's not their fault. The kids have got to go to school. The parents are struggling. So we just want to help wherever we can. And those are one of the things that we notice, you know, kids are coming to school. I have teachers that have talked to me. I have 10 kids in my class who don't have the supplies that they need. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not just under underprivileged kids, like it's reaching out to the middle class now too. And even going to some of the kids that have everything every other year, they don't have school supplies. So we thought that was something good to do. The age group that you deal with, mm -hmm. you say it is for the Leadership Academy, it's middle school kids right now, and we actually are going into where we have our eighth grade kids that are graduating going into high school, so we're debating on whether we want to work with some high school kids. But for all the other programs, we do babies on up to 18, so any type of youth program can reach out to us in order to get a donation or to get help with whatever they're working on. As far as the community, why volunteering. Mm -hmm. Do you accept volunteers? We do. We definitely accept volunteers. We're working on building our volunteer tree right now to make it expand out even more. So if anybody wants to volunteer, we have volunteer applications on our website. They can visit us at defendingdreams.org mm -hmm. and just fill out the website, I mean fill out the application on the website and then they can come volunteer. Where do you see Defending Dream five years from now? I see us doing bigger things. I see us branching out more into the South Carolina area since we're so close, more into like Rock Hill, Fort Mill area, and just doing more events and having a larger board because right now we have like six members and a larger volunteer base mm -hmm. so that we can do more in the community, more events. You had also a, a program of Vegas. Oh, we did. That was a fundraiser we did. The guys, when they come in town from the different teams, mm -hmm. they normally want to do something, you know, the night before the football camp. So we said, hey, let's make a fundraiser out of it. A lot of them like going to Vegas, so let's do a charity fundraiser where they use fake money and they play the casino games that you would normally play in Las Vegas. Okay. And so they pay for the fake money. So they might pay $20 or $40 or $50. They get paper money, and all the money that we raise goes to the foundation. And they play games to win prizes. They could win, like, an iPad 2 or television or dinner with Thomas, something like that. So we bring in those guys and they also get to mingle with the people in the community that support us. So we have all these sponsors and support, uh, supporters in Charlotte area who come in to meet these players. And so they get autographs to get to meet these guys and just mingle and hang out with them. And normally they wouldn't be able to do that. Mm. Growing up, did you ever thought that you would be doing what you're doing right now? Absolutely not. I did not like dealing with kids. They used to make me babysit all the time. I didn't like being around kids at all. And now it, that's just like where my heart is, is it. I'm with kids all the time. No matter how far I try to get away from them, I'm always around kids. So I'm blessed, again, like I said, beyond measure to be able to do it. And I think now I've actually listened to God where he said, hey, this is what I want you to be doing at this point in your life right now, working with this youth. So that's what I want you to do. So I'm doing it. When you go inside these schools mm -hmm. and these children see you, how do you think that makes them feel? No, I think it makes them feel good. They're pretty open and they, you know, talk to us. A lot of them don't know that Thomas is my husband, so that kind of shocks them sometimes when they say, you know, why aren't you, you know, at home or out shopping or something like that? Why are you here? So I think it shocks them to see that I'm there helping. And I think they just, the girls especially, they kind of cling to me and they want to talk and, you know, they want to hear about my life. So it makes me feel good and it makes them feel even better. Building on their self-esteem, mm -hmm. why is that important at this early age of life? Them. It's so important. I know people have seen in the news, you know, the bullying that's going on with kids. We had one middle school that we deal with where there was a child that committed suicide because he was getting bullied so much. So I think that if they had more outlets to go to and more people to talk to, then it would stop some of those things from happening. You know, the taking of drugs and drinking alcohol, you know, the committing suicide, things that don't have to happen for a middle school kid. So I think that them talking to us, it helps them to know that, hey, I can be somebody too. I can do this when I grow up if I want to. I can do that when I, you know, when I grow up if I want to because they have different people to come to and to push them forward. And I know, like I said, it's not the parents' fault sometimes that they're not there to be able to help the kids, Correct. but at least they can take them somewhere where somebody can help them and they don't have to pay for it. You know, I'm defending Dream Foundation. You're doing an outstanding job in this community. Thank you, you thank know, you. I'm, 
you know, what would be the biggest accomplishment that you've seen so far with your program? I think the, the biggest accomplishment would be for us to reach out to more kids. I think right now we've touched a few thousand kids, but for us to reach out, you know, over Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina to multiple numbers of more kids and to see some of these kids graduate from college, some that you never would have thought would even think about going to college, I think that's a huge accomplishment for us. How much passion does your, not only yourself, but the rest of your board members have for this Defending Dream Foundation? Oh my gosh, their passion is amazing. First of all, they're all volunteers, so they're taking this time out of their busy schedules, away from their jobs, their kids, their families, to do this for us for free. This was Thomas and myself, this was our vision, not theirs. And for them to take on our vision as their own, it was just like, wow, like how do you find such amazing people? And I always tell Thomas, you know, as a board, I know everybody's not gonna agree on everything all the time and we're gonna have little conflicts, but in the end, they always work it out. They figure it out for the kids, you know, and they're always there 100% whatever we need and it's just amazing to have people to do that on a volunteer basis like I didn't even know people existed like that in this world still so it's amazing to have all those guys on our board the guys and girls and so we love them we thank them so where should we see defending dream reaching what level I think you should see us reaching some of the huge levels of the larger nonprofits that you see. You're going to see our name out even more once we build our volunteer base up, get more board members because we're a smaller nonprofit right now. Mm -hmm. You're going to see us attached and partner with a lot more organizations to get Charlotte out on the map and get more help for the youth here in the Charlotte area. And what's your website? It's defendingdreams.org. So, okay. O-R-G. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Kelly Davis. I really appreciate you coming Thank on you. the Thank show. Thank you for having um, me. Your program, Defending Dream, I want to say thank you for blessing our youth. No problem. Our community for being a blessing to everyone. I mean, it's, it's, it's truly awesome to see that there's people out here that really care for our youth and our community. We do. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank and, uh, you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's like I said, Kelly Davis, Thomas Davis, Fanny Dream Foundation. You be encouraged, thank you.